Welcome, students, teachers, designers, lawyers, heck, everyone and anyone is officially invited today to learn some design principles using Figma. In this video, I'll be walking you through Figma's shape tools and the many brilliant features behind them. I'm David, a middle school graphic design teacher. Let's get going. First thing you're going to do is take yourself to figma.com slash community and go ahead in the search bar, type in shapes as vector paths. Find a template by tall Mr. Curran, that's me. Get yourself a copy and you'll find yourself in a place that looks like this. There's a lesson if you wanna check that out. The video you're watching now is this video here. Feel free to watch that as many times as you'd like. There's a warm up if you wanna check that out. But for today and for right now in this film, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you the workspace, which is on the design section found within the workspace frame of this area. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave these green shapes alone. And we're gonna be changing these original shapes to be entirely different right um, in the next column and onwards. As you scroll down, you'll see there are some examples. So if you need kind of more of a guide to kind of help you out and to check out maybe some different design ideas, those examples are below on each one of these frames. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the corner radius for this pink column. To do that, left click on the shape. And if you're zoomed out, you will not see those dots appear. So zoom on in and you can left click and drag inwards to soften those corners. Let's do that for each one of these shapes here. And what I'm actually gonna do right now is ignore the ellipses, this um, row of circles or ellipses because they have a world entirely of their own that we're gonna get to later. Next column, you're gonna edit the shape and move some vector points. So to edit the shapes, you can click on this edit object tool or double click to get those vector points to appear. I can then left click and move this however I'd like. I can also see there are some vector points or predictive vector points appearing. Let's go ahead and click on one of those and drag it down. I can also hold down shift to snap things into 45 degree increments while moving that vector point. Next, let's go ahead and double click to get off of that previous shape. Let's go to our edit object and let's move this equilateral triangle to be a right triangle. There we go. Let's go ahead and click done. You can also hit enter on your keyboard or double click off of the shape to move on to the next one. I'm gonna double click here and just bring this vector point down to change that star to be something entirely different. Ignore the circle, let's move on. Next, I'm going to click done. I am going to double click or go to my edit object tool, click on this top left corner, and I'm gonna round that corner radius. Now it looks like a slice of pizza or something, I don't even know, piece of cheese or something like that. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and try to make a gumdrop. Let's click done, let's double click, and let's change the corner radius of this shape right to be here. Bring it down a little bit more. My gumdrop looks a little sharp on the bottom, so let's left click and drag, and let's change the, um, the two of these vector points that have a little bit softer of a corner radius, and I'm stoked on this gumdrop, looks awesome. Let's go ahead and change this shape, and let's double click on our star. Let's hold down shift for these two vector points, and let's change that corner radius, and I have no idea what that is. Looks kind of alien-like or something futuristic, and let's go ahead and say we're done with that. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing, but maybe trying to change one or two more vector points on this column of shapes. I realize I have an extra little thing here. We'll get rid of that and move on. I'm gonna double click on this shape, left click on the top left vector point, hold down shift, left click on that bottom right vector point. Let's change that corner radius to get something like this. Let's click done and move on. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and double click on my triangle, Let's left click and drag over these two and get ourselves a teardrop by changing the corner radius. I'm gonna go ahead and double click on my star and maybe even having a triple click here. Let's select just those inside vector points and let's change them to give it more of a web feel by moving the corner radius upwards. Okay, again, ignore the circles. Let's click done and move on. For this last column of blue shapes, I want you to try some things that you've previously learned in this video and just be bold, be brave, have fun, and kind of choose your own adventure in designing some new things. Let's go ahead and I'm going to double click and also you're more than welcome to copy everything I'm doing. I'm gonna go ahead and left click, change these two shapes. I believe I have a parallelogram here. And let's go ahead and bring that there. Let's click done. I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Let's hit control D. Let's bring this up here and let's hit control D two more times. I'm gonna hold down shift to select that top and that third shape, right click and flip horizontally. Now I have, it was once a square, looks entirely different, looks almost like a staircase or something and I'm feeling pretty stoked. Now I have refrained from showing you on this polygon as well as on the star, 
When you click on them, you've probably noticed and seen there are some more dots that appear than what appear on just the square. The, I wanted to say this for a little bit later just so you didn't get too crazy with this feature, but when you click on this, and there are some other dots here, for the polygon, you can now change the count. You can change this polygon to be have as many sides as you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and now edit this object. Let's hold down Shift, and let's go ahead and round this corner radius to give it somewhat of a look of an iron or a bishop's hat, or maybe, I don't know, a fake fingernail? This is getting weird now. Let's go ahead and do the same thing here on this shape. I'm gonna go ahead and click it once. I'm gonna now change the count. This is my student's favorite shapes. And let's go ahead and change that ratio and let's bring the radius down and let's change the count a little bit more and even bring that ratio inwards just a tad. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the features of the ellipses now. Leave that green one alone. Let's go ahead and click on this one here. If you're zoomed out too far, you will not see this feature, which is the arc. You can change this to now look like your Mrs. or Mr. Pac-Man. And let's go ahead and go to this next one. Let's change the arc as well as change the ratio. Now it looks like a C, pretty cool. Let's change the arc, let's change the ratio, and let's change the sweep to then connect back. Now I have, whoopsies, kind of like a hollow circle or an O, right? Pretty stoked on that. Next, let's change the arc, let's change the ratio, and let's go ahead and change where the starting is of that. Let's bring it to about right here. I'm pretty stoked on that. Now let's go ahead and edit this object. And let's select these right here. Let's hold down shift and let's make ourselves somewhat of a horseshoe. Okay, it was a circle, now it looks entirely different. On this one, I could get a little crazy if I want to. I'm going to change the arc. Let's, whoops, sorry, click done. Let's change the arc. Let's go ahead and change the ratio. Let's close it up. Now let's go ahead and edit this object. Let's bring this inwards. Let's bring this in here. Let's bring this vector point in a little bit. And you also notice that there are these handles. I'm gonna go ahead and change the handles ever so slightly. And you can see that that also changes some features and properties of the shape, okay? So once you have this, zoom on out a little bit and just be stoked on your awesome work. You had these original shapes, the square, the polygon, the star, and the ellipse. And now you can make a ton of different things using these basic shapes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can take these shapes and edit them and change them and design with inspiration even further. Click on just the word workspace to select the workspace frame. Now hit control D once, hit control D one more time. So on this second um, frame that you just duplicated, we're going to highlight by left clicking and dragging over all of these shapes and we're going to add a stroke. The stroke tool is right here. You can slide and change using the slider option or you can even type in, I'm gonna do 15, hit enter, to change the stroke width. You can also change if the stroke appears on the inside, the center, or the outside of the shape. For right now, I'm just gonna use mine to be on the inside, but you might notice that some of these shapes, like this one in the bottom right, might lend itself to be having a different stroke property of maybe the outside, okay? Now we are going to do, I'm not gonna show you all of these, but you're gonna go in and edit each and every one of these shapes now that you have um, a stroke around it, it might give you some ideas to change your shapes ever so slightly. So for this one, I might double click and I might bring this down all the way here. There's some ideas down below for you if you wanna try to edit these shapes further. Next, what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be going to that third frame that you have in your design space and you're going to left click and drag over all of them. I'm now going to give all of these a stroke and I'm gonna give it the same, that stroke of 15. Let's hit enter. Now there's probably a faster way to do this, but this is the only way I know how to do it, is you're gonna be taking the fill by selecting a column at a time, take the fill out of each and every one of these shapes. And you'll eventually have something that looks like this. Now what I teach my students is these shapes are dynamic and so are they. And when you have taken the fill out of these shapes, it sometimes gives you an ability to start seeing things in a little bit different of a light. Let's go ahead and zoom in. You're actually gonna be changing the original shapes column. You can delete these, I guess, labels if you want to. You don't need them anymore. Let's go ahead and hit Control D by duplicating and holding down Shift. And I'm gonna be duplicating this shape. I'm gonna hit Control C, Control V, similar to duplicating, but actually entirely different. And now I have something that is for sure different than what it was. Let's go ahead and highlight all of these, hold down Shift, and I'm gonna be making myself, let's say like a pair of earrings. So I do a lot with laser cutting and 3D printing. So if my students wanted to, they could design this, send it to our laser cutter, 
They could even duplicate this as an SVG file. And now they have themselves a pair of earrings they could make or fabricate. Okay. You're going to be doing this. I'm not going to show you all of the examples, but I do, I do encourage you to edit each shape and change it up and to make um, it to be entirely different than what it once was. So let's go ahead and hit control C, control V again. And let's drag this one up here. Let's change that corner radius to be even more. And this kind of looks like some sort of, I don't know, camera, maybe an Instagram icon style. And if I zoom down, I wanted to show you just a couple of things that I was able to create when I took the fill away and I started just working with that line or those strokes, some different ideas kind of came to mind. This one I'll show you and then we'll move on. I'm gonna go ahead and for right here, hit Control C, Control V. Let's hold down Shift. Let's go ahead and select these again. Hit Control, whoops, don't select all of them. Hit Control C, Control V and move that here. So that kind of gives it, this is like rotational symmetry and we're gonna move on and show you the next step. So once you've edited these shapes and you've changed them to be something that you enjoy, we're now gonna go on to the last step, which is adding some color and maybe even getting into a little bit of designing of icons or maybe even logos from this next section. What I'm gonna do is click on that workspace frame one more time, hit Control D, and you'll see if you zoom out a little bit, this is the last kind of section of this design um, lesson that we're gonna be working on. Now, some designs that I've worked on that I show my students and some students have even made these as well is right below. So if you want some inspiration, you want some ideas, you can go ahead and check out what's below. So for this one, if I go ahead and hit Control C, Control V, hold down Shift, hit Control C, Control V, hold down Shift, we're now gonna add color to these to give it an entirely different feel. If I click on this kind of first shape that I had, I click on the fill, I can click on this gray color, I'm gonna add this to be a blue. It looks like all of those circles are blue, but they're not. Just the back, the furthest one back is, and the other two are transparent. Let's click on this one, give it a fill. Let's go ahead and change this to be green. And let's click on the first or the front circle. It was the most recently copied one. Let's give it a fill. Let's change that to be yellow, okay? So something entirely different, looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead and work on some more. I'm gonna go ahead and show you just kind of from, let's do these two, and then I'm gonna be done showing you this in this video. From here, I'm gonna go ahead, I could change this one right away. Let's make this into somewhat of a flame. Let's go give it a fill. Let's go ahead and make this yellow. Let's go ahead and make this other shape right here. Let's give it a fill. Let's go ahead and make this orange. And let's change that last one. And if you wanna be able to see your things while you edit, move things over. Let's give it a fill and let's change this to be red, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I start getting some ideas. When I have something like this, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to move it over and let's try to create somewhat of a flame icon. Let's hit Control D, hold down Shift, and you now have some overlapping shapes. Hit Control D one more time and it's looking pretty cool. I'm stoked on that. I might go back and edit some things, change some spacing. Let's do one more. Okay, so as you can see, once I start adding fills and I start changing and editing things around, I can make some pretty cool things like you can see here below. And this is where I kind of get ideas and share ideas with my middle school students on how to create custom logos or designs, uh, maybe even app icons within Figma. And this is pretty rad because when they get to this space, they can entirely forget that just a little while ago, they were working on some what they thought were very basic shapes on frame one. So I hope that this is inspiring. Please feel free to watch this video over and over again, hit pause, duplicate this, make it your own, share it with whoever you'd like, and always have a good time designing.